Yes, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 10. We'd like to say good afternoon to those who are watching via Facebook, YouTube, however you're watching. We greet you as well into the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Because that's the only way we can have fellowship with each other. is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a tendency to tame all these other spirits we got. A whole lot of you probably don't like using the words of somebody saying you got spirits. Because that's too spooky. But uh, if this... The Holy Spirit helps tame your tendencies. That's another way of saying it, if y'all, if you don't like spirits. Tendency is another way of saying it. Anybody got tendency to do things that you know you ain't? Feel a way about stuff that you know is not a good feeling to have. Maybe you don't do nothing. You just think a lot of crazy stuff. Either way, amen. The Holy Spirit is what tames all of our tendencies long enough so we can have fellowship in the word of God. Amen. Amen. I've been, uh, I've just been praying all morning. Amen. Amen. Things of calls, phone calls, uh, talk with Charles, mama, talk with Charles. Uh, and we pray with him. Amen. Charles Brandon, amen. This is mother, sister Brandon, mother Brandon. And uh, then uh, the Hagler family, little Faith, who's had life has been a miracle. Uh, he's having surgery, another surgery. And uh, I was. I know it's a hippo, I ain't supposed to tell people business, but just pray for her. Uh, man, she ran a test on her. Well, if they can say it about Kamala Harris, they can say it about Faith. They ran a test on her and she tested positive. I, you know, I don't even want to get into that. You can test five times and gonna get five different in, in, in an hour's time. But anyway, we're praying for you, Faith. We're praying for you, Charles. Then my sister called. Well, my mom was having a rough time, and I rushed over there. So if I'm looking crazy, that's why. Um, rushed over there. She she said something to me uh, while I was trying to stay upbeat. You know what I mean? I done wept and cried a, a lot. So I'm trying to shift. Because you can get stuck in that gear. You know what I mean? Let faith carry me through and carry me on. Hold up whoever's holding on them, you know. So she says, and she said, Baby, I don't know if you understand. I say, Oh, uh, no, nah, Mama. I guess I never will because I'm not in this spot. They're part of the journey she's on. We're coming face to face. You know, we, we, we sang while we on earth. All I want. Up in heaven is what? Just to behold his face. And when we start coming face to face, yeah, yeah. Them rides at the fair didn't look scary until you got on. <laughs> anybody like me? Say, you ain't ever got a, I know one thing, you ever, if you see me on a ride, somebody tied me and tied me down. If I get out of that runaway coal mine thing out there and Six Flags when they first came out, my kids was kids and they was on a ride and I'm daddy and I ain't trying to be out there no way. I'm trying, I don't want to be out of no water park, no theme park. And daddy come on ride with us. I got a ride with him because you know my baby. And that sign said, you know how long the lines were. So by the time you get up there, 
in your turn, they got that sign right there. And they had them on the way. I just wasn't paying no attention. But when I got ready to get on that cold runaway train, it said, if you are pregnant, if you have any uh, heart problems, blood pressure, or any uh, TikTok pacemakers and stuff like that, do not get on this thing. It was too late I was on. I hollered that whole ride. And I, my kids was just laughing. They were just, I hollered that whole ride. And I was saying, God, if you let me live, to get off this thing, I never, I never, and I have never got back on a merry-go-round. I get dizzy just turning around. I ain't finna get. So she said, "You'll never understand, Joe." She said, "I don't know." She said, "I don't know if you understand." That's what she said. She said, "I don't know if you understand what I'm." I said, "No, I don't, Mom." I said, "But I'm here." And I just started singing and praying with her, ministering to her. So I kissed her on her and rubbed on her. I told her, I said, I can't kiss you like I want to because you brushed me over here and I ain't get to brush my teeth. So she started laughing and uh, I left her, left her asleep. So this, this dealt with me today, this lesson. Uh, first, uh, Col Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Father, thank you for this day. We lift up Charles, Brandon. We lift up Faith Hagler and the Hagler family. Brandon family, we lift up. Thelma Thomas, Thomas family, we lift up. Sister Holland Green and family, we lift up. Netta Alexander right now, the funeral services are beginning. We lift that family up. Be God, be our shield, be our buckler, be our fortress, be our shield. In Jesus' name, amen. A lot going on, y'all. All right, we have not ceased to what? Verse 9 said what? We have not, what? Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this cause, since the what? Uh-huh. We have not ceased. Stop. What? Uh-huh. We continually what? To ask what? As who? Uh-huh. To, to fill you with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual good God and might. That you may walk. This is the purpose for being filled with all God's what? Wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. First of all, wisdom help, helps us to understand the knowledge of his will. Ooh. We're we, we praying for a fruitful life. How, 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 according to the scripture we just read, the knowledge of God's will has to be understood in all the wisdom that God can give us. In other words, we're not going to understand anything about God's will without wisdom and understanding. Everywhere in the Bible, when you read it, it says, even in the birth of Jesus, if we go to the Christmas story, that verse will say, now the birth of Jesus went on this wise. Somebody say wise. The way to understand this thing cannot be understood from a carnal mind. So therefore, something has to take place to give you what? Understanding. And the wisdom. There's a wisdom to the world and there's a wisdom of the word. And you can't understand the word with the world's wisdom. To be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
I'm just looking at the text. For this reason, we all, since the day we heard, uh, we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and to ask that God may fill you with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. There's two things working. We got three things. We got will, wisdom, and understanding. Will, wisdom, and understanding. God's will is not his wisdom. But his will can only be understood through his wisdom. Or better yet, God's will has to be understood through his wisdom. Back it up. Wisdom, understanding, wisdom, will. Understanding, wisdom, will. Go forward with it. Will, wisdom, understanding. Unless I know God's will, huh? Then I won't get to ask him for wisdom, wherefore I get a understanding. I got to understand God's wisdom to understand his will. I got to. I would never understand how a woman got pregnant and never laid with a man. Unless I understand it through God's wisdom. Amen. 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 That's why many reject the Bible. Chapter 10, uh, chapter 10 Matthew 13, somewhere. Uh, 10, he say, to many, not many mighty and noble men was this given. They know philosophy, they know theology, they know mythology, they know all of that but when they read the Bible, they can't understand it. And a person who don't know mythology and astronomy and biology and all can read the Bible and understand it. Country uneducated folk. Fools. Because the way to the kingdom of God is so simple. Jesus says that a fool can, and a fool is someone who despises instruction. So if the fool ever stops despising how to be instructed, he can even be saved. But not many mighty, wise, and noble people understood this because their minds were blinded. Are y'all following me? We ought to shout. We ought to be glad that we got God's understanding. When you, you, you ought to just thank God that you're able to read the Bible and understand what God wants and what he's desiring of us and what he's expecting of us and how he deals with us. The, the, the Bible is, they taught me and uh, Dr. Johnson, that's Dr. Johnson back there with many degrees back there. They taught us that the Bible is the mind of God. The, the Bible is God's will. The Bible is God's purpose. The Bible is God's governing rule. The, the Bible, the word of God, is God's relationship to man how he plans to relate to man, how he related to man, how it all got started, why, why it is where it is right now. The Bible is all of that. This, this, is, this is the key to life. It, it, when we was in school, they had book, they had book, our book, our textbooks. That, they had glossaries, and then in the, after the glossary, they had answers to stuff in the book. But you know what they did? They put the answers where you had to turn the book upside down. Y'all remember that? Did y'all pay attention to that? They had the glossary. With the, well, glossary was the definitions of words and stuff in the book. And then in, even in the math books, they had pages after the glossary that had numbers and answers to the question. But if you didn't turn it right side up, you could never understand it. Or know what it was. Unless somebody, it was a mystery. You used, man, everybody in your class wasn't that small. They didn't, you know, when you knew what answers were, you didn't share them with everybody. You, you know, you wanted to be the one to make the straight A's. And, and, and some of us was just <laughs> so stupid, we didn't even know that that's what they was doing. They was getting the answers from the back of the book. Oh, my God. The answers is in this book. This 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 lifelong higher learning or education of 
When you get saved, that's a higher learning. Of, that's a higher learning. Salvation is a whole nother level. It ain't nothing to be worldly. That's natural. But to be spiritually minded, you got to enroll in higher learning. Salvation is God. Calvary was God saying, come unto me. All ye that labor and who are what? Heavily laden and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Paul says to the church at Colossae, he says that pray that you get the, wisdom, the will of God and in all of its wisdom and understanding. I'm constantly asking God, show me what you want me to do. How am I to do this? When am I going to do this? When do you want me to do it? Because I want to be in all wisdom of his will. I don't want to just be out here doing something and it ain't got nothing to do with what he wants done. Because I can't expect him to back me. Amen. I said that because have you ever been in a, a country where there's been a lot of ripening fruit in the sun? Anybody from the country? Anybody from California? It's a ripening where fruit ripens in the sun. Uh, the Christian life is to be, if you look at verse 10, if go and read verse 10 of uh, Colossians. Verse 10 say what? I'm going to say it one more time. That's why I'm asking God to give me all wisdom and understanding of his will so I can live a fruitful life. That, that's well pleasing to the fruit inspector. Because I thought all fruit was sweet, but I found out all fruit in the fruit category ain't sweet. You got fructose and you got acid fruits. You got fruits that are high in fructose, which is the natural sugar. And you got fruits that are high in acid. That's the sour. One of the one of the, one of the things about sour fruit is good for the body as well. Sour fruit helps with perspiration and diarrhea. Sour fruits. If if you got problems sweating all the time, and you got diarrhea all the time, start eating sour fruits. That acid. I mean, the old people didn't. They were not scientists, but they were scriptures. They were scripturists. <laughs> they weren't scientists. I just made up a word, Doc. They weren't scientists, but they were scripturists. They, 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 they knew that scripture. Huh? They, they had the wisdom. They could ask God, God, what should I do? And God would tell them. Now, y'all getting quiet. So sweet. That your life be. So everything, when I said I thought all fruits was there, I found out it was not only not all sweet fruits, which is high in fructose, which is the natural sugar. You go to the hospital, they're not going to give you sugar. They're going to give you fructose. They're going to give you a bag of, in that IV. What you call it? Dextro. It's got a trose on it. I know that. It's got a, it's got a fruit. It's going to rhyme with fructose. <laughs> but y'all, it's got a coats on the end of it. Glucose, fructose, dextrose, whatever. Anybody? What's another uh, nurse, nurse Betty? I mean, nurse Tim Craigler. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? It helps with that. So I thought our life should be sweet. But not only is is not all sweet fruits, you got sour fruits. You got sw sweet versus sour. But you got fruits that are a combination of fructose and acid. That's good for the body. It threw, it threw me out. Can I just read some of it right quick? I, th I thought it was interesting. I, I really did. Uh, sweet fruits, uh, grapes, apples, mangoes, pears, some of these fruits that you will find to be sweet in taste, these fruits contain a greater amount of fructose than sour fruits. 
sweet fruits contain more calories because of their high in fructose sugar. Now, eating, that means people say, I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to eat fruit. Well, if you got sugar already, it's certain fruits. You ought to go to the sour fruits if you're going to eat it and not stay away from the what? Sweet ones because it's high in sugar. See, there'll be grapes out there and wonder why you're going into a coma. Because you're eating a lot of fructose. <laughs> nah, for real. We just, we just read it, am I right? Don't it make, is that a wisdom or what? It wisdom and all understanding. Okay. Then the sour fruits, it says, contain more taste of acid. Citrus fruits, like lemons, limes, have a large amount of acid, which, which accounts for the sour and the times of bitter taste. Other fruits include kiwi, which is considered a sour, black currants, am I saying that right? Black currants, and raspberries, all right? Sweet and sour. Here's the Chinese, this is what I want to get to. According to Chinese traditional medicine, foods with sweet flavor affect the stomach and the spleen. Fruits with high in sugar affect the stomach and the spleen. While foods with a sour flavor, the citrusy, affect the liver and the gallbladder. So we run the risk of our spleen and our stomach if we deal with a lot of sweet stuff and deal with the liver and the gallbladder with sour stuff. According to Chinese belief, this is according to belief, this is something to give you to think about. According to Chinese belief, sweet fruit such as watermelon, now this is called God is awesome. I'm giving God glory. I ain't thinking about all this Chinese stuff. I'm giving God, God revealing himself through all of this. God made all of this. The sweet and the sour. He made it all, and he gave it all a purpose. Yes, sir. Come on now. Come on. And if used properly, it allows you to be fruitful. But misuse and mismanagement will damage. That's why it says do everything in moderation. You can't get drunk if you moderately drank. Because to be drunk means you went in excess. It's done got quiet in here. This Bible study, this ain't science class. This ain't science class. This Bible study. This, we're on a whole higher learning level right now. Because God is expecting us to what? Be fruitful. And that our fruits please him. So, so if, watch this, if he made both, he made one uh, fruit that's so cold, it's going to blow your mind. This fruit so cold, it neutralizes the sweet and the sour. What'd you say? What'd you say? This fruit I'm going to tell y'all, when you eat it with what you eat, neutralizes it. Y'all want to know what that fruit is? I can't tell you till I tell you one more time. This fruit here, <laughs> it's God is so awesome. This fruit, when I tell you what this fruit is, and you might not even like this fruit, it neutralizes the sweet and the sour fruit, the acid and the fructose. It neutralizes so that it can't do nothing to your spleen and your stomach, nothing to your liver and your gallbladder. Y'all know what to neutralize something, don't you? It to neutralize something means to make it, what, ineffective. To strip it of its original intent, power, huh? Neutral. Come on in here, son. That stuff you got in your washroom that you spray over the house early in the morning or after something has been cooked. What you doing? You neutralizing that air. That's they call. They got an air freshener called neutralizer. Y'all want to know what that fruit is? Before I tell you, Ron, I got. Watermelon. I couldn't believe it. Watermelon neutralizes 
when you everything you ain't supposed to be. Now listen, don't be like people who got sugar, gone eat cake, and then say I'm gonna take a shot. All you doing is neutral, neutralizing the damage you keep doing. Just watermelon. Watermelon, wa wa watermelon, watermelon takes the high level of sweet fruits along with the high level toxic toxicity of the acids and brings them to neutral, balance them out. See, some of y'all don't like me. I eat my dessert and my food. So if y'all eat your food, then you dessert. But I'm eating cake and chicken. The, the sour and the sweet. I just, it's a bit new. I used to get whoopings for it. That's kind of like neutralized. I didn't know it. That's just how I liked it. But watermelon does that. Now somebody said, did we? Tune in today to hear about watermelon, and cantaloupes, and citrus fruit. No, I'm just trying to tell you. Colossians 1, verse 9 and 10 said, when you know the will of God and what everything's purpose is, when you understand that the sex is not for recreation, it's for procreation. And if you're not procreating, you're being a good steward over what's been produced. Are y'all with me? Here? That what what marriage is for is not what the world say it is, huh? That these two shall become one. That's what a union is. Two becoming one, huh? Bringing two different people together and they becoming one. And the only way you can become one is in the spirit. Because you had your background, I had my background. But the only way we gonna neutralize. We got to get some of God's watermelon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at somebody and tell them, put some watermelon in your diet. Yes, put some watermelon in your marriage. Put some watermelon in your bank account. Put some of God's watermelon in your money. Pay him 10% and see he won't give you a watermelon patch. <laughs> He'll open up the windows of heaven. And watermelons be just busting you upside the head. That you won't even have what? Room enough. This Bible is so real it'll scare you sometimes. Boy, I'm trying to tell you. Huh? A fruitful life is first of all sweet. So we do need some fructose. We need some sugar. Amen. Then we got some sour folks too now. But but according to the word of God, we he made both of them and they got a purpose. Too much sweet, you add sour, we'll neutralize it. You understand? Somebody say sweet, sweet. A fruitful life is a sweet life. Is your life sweet? Or is it the citrus fruit? Your life is high in acid. You show up, everything start dissolving. Somebody else show up, start clogging up with love and just flowing with love. First thing is sweet. A fruitful life is a sweet life. Huh? We love grandma, we love grandkids, we love grandparents because. Uh, children like their mamas, daddy, uh, brothers and sisters. I like my uncle so and so, my auntie so and so. You didn't care about your mom and daddy, but you like their brother and sister. Because they were sweet to you. Mom and daddy had to be your parent. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, they were sweet to you. They let you do what you want. You know what I'm saying? Everybody need a little sweet in their life. Amen. No, for real. Because they, they are citrus fruit. They sweet and sour. And I can be sweet and sour. You can be sweet and sour. You have the ability to be sweet 
And you have the ability to be what? Sour. And there are times that call for you to add some sugar to it. And there come time you need, might, got to show a little acid. <laughs> Am I right about it? Then there come time you just use a little watermelon and neutralize it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when you know God's will and you have the wisdom and understanding of his will, you will know when to use Acid and sugar or neutralized. That's a fruitful life. Secondly, a fruitful life, if you're writing this down, a fruitful life is refreshing. You know, after, after you get through talking to people, they ought to just say, hmm, that was good. Have you ever was hot in the summertime? And got some water. Just some water. Just some cold water. It was what? Have you ever come outside the house? I tried your house. Your air is on. It's hot outside. And you walk in your garage door. And you, mm. and you mess around and say, Lord, thank you for the air condition. That's what re Y'all want to know what made that woman drop her water pot? When she met Jesus at the well, he refreshed her. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord, he did. All right. She ran back to town and said to everybody, come see a man yeah. that has told me everything by myself. Yeah. That was refreshing. What did, he, what did he do before she left? She, he said, baby, there's going to come a time you ain't got to come to this well to worship me. Matter of fact, I'm going to put in you a well springing up unto everlasting life. A fruitful life, a Christian life is a fruitful life. It's refreshing. You ought to refresh people. We, we've been sent in this world to refresh people. So many lives are stuffy. Foul odors and smells, carcasses, dead stuff, bitter stuff, sweet stuff that's done went sour. It's just all kind of stuff. And, and you ought to be able to refresh somebody. If, if it ain't nothing before, why y'all at work together? Or why y'all working together? Or while y'all sitting up, doing whatever y'all doing. Be refreshing. Fruitfulness is refreshing. Huh? When, when the spring hit, when it used to hit on, on a regular basis, you could smell it. And, and you would know it had a spring. And you know what people try to do? They try to capture that refreshing smell of spring and put it into what? Air fresheners and oils and scents and sprays. And they call it springtime. Amen. It means a time of budding. A time of blooming. A time of blossoming. A time of birth. What was conceived in the winter is being birthed in the spring. The little calves and the little ones are just moving up ducklings and all that stuff. Y'all not hearing this. That's a fruitful, that's, that's refreshing. You know why a whole lot of saints are sad right now? They, they, ain't, they ain't got no fruit to eat they self. It's alone refresh somebody else. They got half an orange, a banana. They, they got a pizza sandwich with some crumbs and two or three french fries left. And you coming in the house walking with groceries. Going to the same church, listening to the same word being preached. Studying from the same Bible. Under the same anointing. But the fruits vary. One word is being preached while thousands are being refreshed. Another 500 is being angered. Because that ain't what they want to hear right now. 
understand the will of God in all of his wisdom and his spiritual understanding. The key word to everything I'm talking about is spiritual understanding. Somebody repeat that to me. Lord, help me to understand this spiritually. Give me spiritual understanding. Carnal and spiritual understanding two different things. Just like I thought it was only sweet fruit. You got sour versus sweet. Then you got a fruit that got both sweet and sour. And then you got a fruit that'll neutralize all of them. If you would really be honest today, you ought to just tell somebody, text somebody out the Bible study and say, that's what it been. God been giving me some watermelon. I've been eating God's watermelon. He been, he ain't annihilated me. He could have let one take over the other. I could have lost spleen and stomach, gall and bladder. <laughs> Are y'all with me here? But thanks be unto God, in this season of your life, he's giving you some watermelon. You ought to just have a watermelon praise for the rest of the week. Thank God for, the wa thank God for neutralizing. Thank God for not letting one overtake the other. Thank God for not letting everything that you've intake, yo, that you digested. Thank God it didn't kill everything in you. Vital stuff. When you say spleen, when you say stomach, when you say gallbladder, that's some vital stuff. But he neutralized it. His word, his word. Somebody thank God for the watermelon. Thank God for the watermelon. But also a fruitful life is refreshing. It's refreshing, but it's then, thirdly, nourishing. Nourishing. We like to be refreshed, but we have a problem with nourishing when it's our time to nourish. To nourish means you've got to give of yourself now. You got to give up what you've been given. The fruit that God has blessed you to produce, you enjoyed it all during the production process. Now, God says somebody else can benefit from this. And the harvest has to take place. That tree limb hangs on to that fruit as long as it can. But the old preachers used to say, that some fruit don't have to be picked. When it's ripe, it'll fall. <laughs> some stuff don't have to be plucked. A whole lot of it gets picked up. Because when that nectarine matures, what makes, that, what makes it heavy is the fructose. What makes it heavy is the sugar in it. When that, pear, when that pear tree that used to stick straight up and was so pretty, now it's loaded with fruit, it starts just splitting. It's because all that weight is coming from maturity. So now the tree can no longer, the mom and them said it all the time, this old world can't afford me no longer. That tree can't afford to hold all that. And everything starts dropping, dropping. So that somebody else, before the bees and the walls and the insects, somebody else can what? Not have to pluck it. All they got to do is pick it up. And we have a problem with when it, when it comes our time to be nourishment to somebody. Because now we've got to give up what we were given. I sit there with my kids in the backyard sometimes. I'll be like, how y'all find out I was back here? And then all of them start showing up. Now I'm like, man, I can't even have a minute. What they doing is they trying to be nourished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They sit up and talk crazy because they know daddy going to say, you know that's stupid, don't you? Right. Let me drop this on you. I know you grown. You're going to do what you want to do. And you ain't got to be in here no more. But nourish me. Let me give you some re Let me Let me let you know, before one jot or tittle of God's word fail, heaven and earth going to pass. What daddy been telling you ain't changed. It's because you're 26 don't mean God doesn't turn stupid. Huh? Huh? If, if I change what I done told you, then God ain't who he is. 
And since I know I ain't going to have to change what I told you, you better believe God is who he is. And you got to stand before him. And you ain't going to be able to say my daddy didn't. My mama didn't. Are y'all with me here? And then guess what? The conversation changed. And pretty soon everybody starts saying, well, daddy, put them go. And nourishing leaves you drained. A good example to me is uh, blood bank. When you go and give blood that somebody else needed or in times of emergency or whatever, tra trauma event, but somebody needs blood, blood transfusion, car accident. That's you giving your nourishment. No, for real. You giving life for real. You giving life for real. Because blood is life. If ain't no blood flowing, ain't nothing living. Anything living got blood in it. A mosquito, if it ain't got your blood, it got somebody else's blood. Huh? It's got blood. The smallest, minute organism, microorganism, got blood in it. To have life. It's nothing that's noticeable that's come under the microscope. There's nothing that, it's, if it's alive, it's got blood in it. Even a jellyfish. Somebody said, well, I done seen jellyfish before, and I done seen a whole lot of creatures in there. I done smashed them. I ain't seen nothing red. Well, let me share something with you. Blood is plasma. Somebody say plasma. That redness is just the liquid. Okay. So if you ever smashed a bug and you saw creamy slime, <laughs> That's plasma. That's blood in that world. All right. Somebody say nourishing. Now, they don't let you give blood if yours bad now. They, they ask you, now, do you have any diseases? Because <laughs> we don't want to transfer detriment. We want nourishment. We don't want nobody. We want you healed, but we don't want you to infect nobody else. Come on, help me, somebody. I done ate plenty of apples off the ground that had holes in them. You know, they say they got holes and worms in them. But you know what I did? I cut them open. And I cut the where it wasn't no hole no more, and I ate that apple. It even wasn't but a cone. Hey, man, I done ate pearls off the ground. None of them got sick, and none had to take up this mall, castle, all that. Done ate unripe fruit. <laughs> done had peach fuzz in my lips. Because see, even the fuzz on that peach got to mature. So that when you get a full ripe peach and wash it, that fuzz don't bother you. It's, I'm out of here. Y'all ain't getting none of this. Somebody say fragrant. Fragrant. An aroma. A productive, fruitful life gives off an aroma. What you smell like? What, 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 what smell are you giving off? What is your life? What kind of, is your life a sweet fragrance or is it a... Anybody been to the perfume store? And they put all this stuff in your nose and let you smell everything? They got to have some coffee grind or something to let you smell after you done smelled everything, and everything starts smelling the light. Or you can't just smell it. You can smell it, but you can't distinguish it. And so they'll say, just put your nose here and breathe this, right? What does that coffee grind do? Neutralize. <laughs> your senses that have been traumatized from all of that fragrance. Some people like sweet smelling fragrance. Some people like, uh, Oil or ooze, uh, you got ooze, you got, you know what I'm saying. You like fragrances for the winter, fragrance for, I don't like nothing heavy, I don't like nothing like, some people say, I don't like nothing at all, I like fresh, I like natural, I like oils, I got, I, 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 I. 
life, your Christian life, when you're productive, you are a fragrance. So many people I love to see, like I love to see, I look forward to seeing people who love the word. That's a fragrance to me. That's it's a sweet smelling fragrance to me to know people that can worship and desire God and yeah, all of that. That's a fragrance. Amen. Amen. Sustaining. Sustaining. A fruitful Christian life is sustaining. Your life is not fruitful if you're struggling all the time. You can't, you can't, you can't help nobody because you always need help. God is our help. But, but it's a lot of folks make it look like God ain't even helping them. Because they're always struggling. You ought to at least be able to Sustain what God gave you. You may not get a surplus, but at least you got what he gave you. And doing the best with it. Not burying it, but doing the best with what you got. That's what people ask. How you doing, Tom? Oh, man, I'm doing the best with what I got to do it with. Because I can't do nothing with what I ain't got to do it with. But it's a lot of people ain't doing nothing with what they got. You can't even sustain it. You can't. I put the medicine on the nightstand. You can't take it. <laughs> I put gas in the car. You can't go to the store for yourself. I pay the insurance. I pay the mortgage. I, and you can't. I, I turned on the shower for you. You can't get in there. I bought the groceries. You can't cook them. I set the stove. I, you can't. Jesus said to the, y'all can't watch me for an hour. You can't even watch an hour with me. A fruitful Christian life is a life that sustains. Tell somebody, you, you doing well with what you got. Yeah. With what you've been through, with what you've had to endure, you, look, you don't look like what that's, well, that's what that means. I don't look like what I've been through. Because God sus, sustained. Oh, Lord, I'm about to shout on this watermelon. I keep thinking about that watermelon. God has neutralized. You don't know how much God done neutralized that was trying to just wipe me out. Or that could have. Not even trying, it just could have. Because of my ignorance of his will. I wasn't operating in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We talking this morning, we, we, we was sitting there, I was sitting there looking at them while we was trying to work out, and I'm trying to stop from hurting myself, and they just wouldn't let me move. And a uh, song came on, uh, and, it, and, and before we know it, everybody in there was looking silly, crying and worshiping. And, and we just all left out there saying, <laughs> devil don't know, I'm on top of him now. That, that don't mean nothing to y'all. It meant something to us at that time, but maybe that'll bless you right now. Do you know that you, you can look at the devil and say, you should have got me when you had me. Because I know better now. I know his understanding. I know his will. I got God's wisdom. And he's given me spiritual understanding. You just can't tell me anything no more. You just can't. I, man, the police pulling you over, not because they just saw you. They spotted you. Way before you saw them. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I'm on top of the devil. The devil is already defeated. All I got to do is sustain. All I got to do is just hold on. And let the Lord fight these battles. Somebody say sustain. A fruitful life, a fruitful Christian's life. A Christian's life that's fruitful. 
is a life of sustaining. I know, I know pastors and preachers who done had 15 churches in 10 years. And I know pastors and preachers, pastors rather, who have been pastoring for 15 years, one church. I'm a witness to that. And it's me saying that has nothing to do with me thinking I'm better than they are. I just know God sustained me for 30 some years. Amen. No, 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 I didn't have the sense of the intelligence because I had a lot of acid <laughs> and I had a whole lot of sugar. But I just thank God for a whole lot of watermelon. <laughs> Do y'all hear me? I thank God. I'm, 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 I'm testifying. I'm testifying right now. I thank God for a whole lot of watermelon. But he sustained me. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a lot of things I saw being done. I wanted to do it so I could do it better. But God said, no. I called you for a purpose. And you, you, you can't do, you can't do, you can't act like you don't know, Jeff. Because I've taught you myself. I've showed you. You can't play crazy. Don't that, don't that make, make it not fun sometimes? At least you can just plead temporary crazy just to have a little pleasure. But God be like, you know better. It's a lot of people who don't know no better. That's, that's, have you ever asked how do people keep getting away with stuff and you think about doing it and God just jacked you up? Huh? Won't he do it? I say you just think about it. It's like you get, a, you get the conviction, the condemnation of it as if you did it. While other folks do it and don't have another thought about it and been doing it for a long time and you be like, wait, well, God, help me understand. <laughs> help me understand how they don't even go to church. And they kids graduate. And I drug mine to Sunday school. And I'm down to loose stared all the time. Help me understand this. God, help me. Give me, give me <laughs> the spiritual understanding of why this is going the way it's going. David said, when I saw how the wicked prosper, David said, my foot almost slipped. Do y'all not know how many days my foot? Because I'm asking God, how do they get away with this? And I don't even get started. All right. I got one more thing y'all ready for. Delightful. It all, your life, a Christian's the proof of life is a life that people just like being around you. You bring, you bring, you bring, you bring it. You bring light into their life. You are salt. Um, you are a city form that sits on the hill that cannot be hid. You are refuge. Your life is a, not you, your life is a beacon. And if you ain't going to appreciate a lighthouse unless you've been on a storm at sea. Only a ship that's being tossed and driven and has been thrown off course can appreciate a lighthouse. You, done had, you, you will have had to have been drunk darkness to appreciate there's a lighthouse. Your ship done had to been tossed, twisted, flipped, turned upside down, and you don't, it doesn't matter about you having a compass, you don't know which way to go. That's how dark it is. But to see a lighthouse. Mom and them say, let the lighthouse. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Huh? All I need to see is the lighthouse in the dark. I don't need no compass. All I need to see is the light. I just go toward the light. Lord have mercy. 
Your life, our lives ought to be delightful, y'all. Our lives ought to be delightful. Amen? Amen. I got one minute, 60 seconds, or 60 seconds. A fruitful life, write this down, requires careful cultivation. You got to be careful what you mix with, what you mix in with what you're turning over. Because to cultivate means you turn over the soil, right? right. right. You take that bottom soil and turn it over, flip it. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? But now, if I take some bottom soil and flip it and there's some worms in it, I got to take the worms out. Because the worms were on the root. The worms, them grass worms, them grub worms, that's why that grass stopped turning brown, because they're eating the root of it. Huh? Amen. And it requires careful cultivation. You can't just turn the soil and just leave it and start watering. You don't know what you done dug up. Amen. You just digging and digging and digging. You, you got to careful, carefully cultivate that thing. You got to be careful what you mix with it, what you allow into your life. Huh? Think about how you start feeling, how you start thinking, how you, when, who came in, when what you start eating, when what you, you know, you go to the doctor, they ask, well, how long you been feeling this way? Uh, have you, your eating habits changed? Have you, life, what they'll say, have life changed for you? Any events in your life have changed? Any critical surgeries, any traumatic events? All this has to do with their what? Prognosis. All this has to do with the diagnosis of what's going on, right? It may be a change in this that's caused a shift in that. Oh. So there has to be careful. You just don't tell them, give me this medicine for this. You really need a prescription. Just trying to get something for something. No, no. And finally, it requires a deeper, consistent walk. Whew, Lord have mercy. No, deeper and consistent. Time to go deep with God, y'all. He said, I want to lower you down into the depths of my treasure. The little boy was on the ship. I closed. The little boy was on the ship. And the ship ran into a storm. Everybody else took cover in the bow of the boat, trying to man that ship to weather that storm. The little boy got his little Tonka toy truck, went out on the bow, playing with that truck like it was a sunshiny day. First in command runs out to the little boy and say, get in here. And he wouldn't come. He kept beckoning for him, get in here. It's a storm out there. He kept beckoning. The little boy wouldn't come. He ran out to the boy and say, why are you not coming in here where it's safe? It's a storm out here. The little boy just kept playing with his truck and looked at it. And say, my dad is the captain of this boat. See, that's the kind of commitment <laughs> and that deep consistency we got to have with God that people look at you and say, why ain't you tripping? Why ain't you pulling your hair out your head? Do you, did you hear what they said? Do you hear what the news say? Did you hear what they said they were going to do to you? And you just keep playing with your little talk. And you, you have that assurance like that little boy. My dad driving this ship. My daddy gonna take, my, my heavenly father watches. Now that was just an earthly story. But my heavenly father, I ain't worried about gas prices. I, I, can't, I can't fret because of the cost of living going up. You've been grown a long time and the cost of living done been up that many times. And somehow, some way, you make God bring you what? Give you some watermelon. He let you have a little watermelon, neutralize that thing. Huh? Amen. 
God bless you and keep you as I pray today. I pray those you worshiping with us online today that you were blessed by the word today. Amen. We're praying for, again, those names that we mentioned. God heard us, and he knows what we need the most. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your deeper and consistent walk. Amen. Just a what? Closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please, daily walking close to thee. As I walk, dear Lord, let me walk close to thee. Lord, take me deeper. Instead of $5, take me $10. Take me 20 Lord, just let me take a leap of faith. Amen. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this people. And we just ask that your word would take root and residence in the life of the hearer that received what you had to say. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.